I was asked just to say a few words to the children as just some things have been in my mind. But first of all, a verse over in the book of Ephesians and chapter 1. And we read there in, uh, in this chapter, in verse 7 of Ephesians 1, in whom, that's Christ, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. I have the privilege of visiting many countries, and if I'm in a country, I like to pick up the flag of that country. And they have quite a few flags at home, and I haven't brought many of them at all, I assure you. I just picked up a very few on the way, uh, just coming out uh, this morning. Just a very, very few of them. But I do like to collect flags, because flags are very interesting. Uh, many flags of countries are designed, and even the colors have great stories behind them. And they have what we call symbolic meanings, the colors. And the flags are very, very interesting. Of course, flags are very ancient. They come from Bible times. We all know the story of how the Israelites were brought out of Egypt, hundreds of thousands of people. They didn't just walk like a great crowd. No, the Bible says they walked six abreast. And you know that each tribe had a banner or a flag, a standard, same word. They walked behind their particular flag. Judah, it always went first. Most think it was the lion was on that standard, the lion of the tribe of Judah, and so on. So it's in the Bible, much about flags. The Lord Jesus Christ, one of his great titles in Scripture is the flag. He shall be an ensign lifted up. Jehovah Nissi, the Lord our banner. We could talk a lot about that. In fact, some years ago, I wrote a tract, I think it was Cumber recently did this copy uh, of the flag, our union flag, and spoke about its construction, how it's got the cross of St. Patrick and so on, the cross of Andrew, the cross of George, and then, of course, how Christ is our flag and how our union flag it does represent the gospel. You can preach a great gospel message on our union flag. It's not a union jack, by the way. I know that's what we often grew up saying, that uh, the union jack's on the boat. <laughs> it's a jack when it's put on the boat. But anyway, the union flag, I could talk about that, its construction, its colors, and so on, and how it represents Christ. Of course, you know that one, don't you? The cross of St. George, the English flag. Of course, this one here, if you ever over in Australia, and oh, many other ones here. There's Gibraltar, and there are many other ones at home. Uh, Romania, some of you I'm sure have seen it. The Romanian flag, Singapore, Nepal, many countries, Papua New Guinea. I do like their flags and think about them. And when I was thinking of speaking this morning, I remembered that this afternoon in Martyrs, there's going to be a memorial, a memorial service for Dr. Bill Woods. For over 50 years, he went to the land of Brazil and he worked in what's called the Amazon. That's a great basin of a great massive river. Now, not a river like we have, the Lagan. <laughs> it's even wider than some of Loch Ireland places. Large ships can go up it. And the Amazon covers not only Brazil, but parts of Venezuela, Colombia. It's a massive, hundreds and hundreds of square miles. And much of it's very remote. And Dr. Bill Woods, for years and years, went up and down the river, treating people with leprosy. And I'll not go into the story, I'm sure you know it. So I thought about that today. And then I got some videos from uh, my sister in Colombia. She's been there about 56 years, uh, married to Colombia, and they both worked in an Indian tribe, translated the New Testament. Or lived, well, my brother-in-law died earlier this year, was a pastor of a church. He's in his 80s. And they worked for many years in a tributary of the Amazon. And they sent me little videos of a nephew of mine, and he's on a very large boat. And he's the administrator of a medical team where doctors come from Canada, America, and other places for a few months. And they're going up and down a tributary of the Amazon, just as Bill Woods did, in uh, treating people who can't get to doctors and hospitals. And I was thinking about that. So I brought with me, and I keep it in my study, and that is the flag. You may not know that one. But that's the flag of Colombia. Colombia, South America. I visited there some years ago, just for your encouragement, by the way. 
My brother-in-law and another nephew work in a printing press. They have 150 full-time workers, six days a week, 24 hours a day, printing Bibles, hymn books. When they do a hymn book, they do 100,000 or so at one go, tracks a million at a time for all South America, Portuguese, Spanish. The Lord is working. Anyway, that's the flag of Colombia. And when I look at that flag, it teaches me wonderful lessons. You have yellow, blue, and red. Why? Why did they come up with this flag? Blue is for the sky, the sea. And it speaks of blessings, of freedom. You see, the native South Americans were slaves of the Spanish. But a man called Bolivar, Bolivia, named after him, he came and they were set free from slavery. So when the Colombians look at the blue, we're free. We're free. We have blessings. Now the red, well, that reminds them to get their freedom. A lot of people had to sacrifice and die. That's the same in our union flag. You think of the sacrifice so that we could be free. The yellow, well, one day when I was visiting my wife and I some years ago, we went to the famous gold museum. And everything's behind double glazed glass and security because you go into your room, but both this size, and they turn the lights off, and then they turn them on, and you wouldn't believe the gold. On, but you know, one tribe they say used to eat of gold plates. The Spanish, of course, came and took away a lot of the gold. Gold, the riches, the riches. And when I think of this flag, I think of the verse I read earlier, in whom we have redemption through His blood the forgiveness of sins, the riches of His grace. You see, we're born slaves. We mean we're not slaves, are we? Oh, yes. As the Bible says, if we sin, we're slaves to sin. You see, we're condemned. We're judged because we're sinners. And we, not, we cannot enter heaven with one unforgiven sin. So therefore, we're slaves. We're condemned. Ah, but the blue reminds us redemption. We're set free. That word redemption means of a slave. And when the Bible was written in Ephesians, there were, oh, thousands of slaves. But 35% of the population were slaves. Amazing, isn't it, to believe that or to understand that? They all knew what slavery was. But a slave could be set free. A price could be paid and he could be bought and set free. And you see, we've been set free. If you trusted in Christ this morning, through Christ, you're set free. You're no longer condemned because of your sin. You can be in heaven. And of course, the red reminds me, in whom we have redemption, set free, liberty, through his blood. We can only come to know God and be forgiven and set free because of the Savior's sacrifice for us. He shed his blood on Calvary so that we could be set free. So you have the, the red. You have the yellow. What does the yellow speak of? It said the gold. Well, it speaks of the blessings we have in Christ, the riches of his grace. Do you know, it says in the Scripture that this book we have, the Bible, it's more precious than gold. Isn't it wonderful to have a Bible, to be able to come to God's house and read the Bible? That's actually a copy of the New Testament my sister and brother-in-law worked on in a tribe of Indians called the Curipaco. In other words, when they went there, they, they couldn't read or write. Very few of them could speak Spanish. They only spoke their own language, but the missionaries had to learn their language, write it down, and the, the New Testament was published. And this is a copy of my mother and father given to them for their prayers as they worked. Isn't it wonderful that tribe have the Bible? There's still people in the world who don't have the Bible. And when you read this scripture that's full, it's like gold, more precious than gold to have a Bible because it tells us about the Lord Jesus Christ and about the greatest riches we can have. Do you know if you know the Lord Jesus Christ, you're rich? You're rich because you're the son and daughter of a king. You have riches that money can't buy and death can't take away, knowing the Lord Jesus Christ. 
And so we ought to rejoice today. We are so rich in him. And when I was a child in children's meeting, we used to sing, Oh, yes, my friend, there's something more. There's something more than gold. To know your sins are all forgiven is something more than gold. So if you ever see a Colombian flag, you think of the colors, what it represents, that we're set free because of the blood of Christ and his sacrifice and we can enjoy wonderful blessings in the Lord Jesus Christ, where we know the riches of his grace.